Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me in TNO, the Brave New World with a Code Talker up to episode 6 in which we're playing as everyone's favorite Russian Federation. The Russian Federation, but the world stage is set. The sailor looked out at the vast splendor of Novosibirsk from the skyscraper's balcony, he smiled, and took a swig of the vodka that lay in his hand. Good God, how it burned. But it burned like Novosibirsk, energetic and warm, hateful and loving and proud, alive and forcing you to live with it. It was kind of a drink and the kind of the city that made you change with it. But Kurishkin knocked on the door to the balcony and slipped outside. What's in your mind? Shukshin smiled at his old friend. They're all beyond Russia. He leaned back onto the balcony's glass railing. We can't just nerve dive into that uh, horde. German horde. Russian needs allies, people we can trust, trade with, and live with. Alexander shook his head. Shook his head. Allies are one thing, but I've often thought of a sphere. He took a sip of his own vodka. An area we can trade with, yes, but one that follows our lead. That looks to us as leaders, not the Americans, not the Japanese, us, our own OFM. In a sense, yes, Shukshin sighed, looking down at his glass. There's no doubt the world is changing. When we were taking Moscow, we will... Uh, will we still be useful to Washington? Will Tokyo still allow us to compete with them in a fair market? Will they allow our people to prosper? These thoughts have been on my mind. But could I should clap the president on his shoulder? I'm in agreement, old friend. You're not the only one in Russia to realize this fact. Heck, everyone except the pacifists realizes that the globe is like a market. Only the strong survive, get rich, and live to fight another day. They can only be one apex predator in an economy. He looked out at the glittering lights of Novosibirsk. So, where will we turn our gaze next? Shukshin smirked, our ancestral neighbors. It's the time the Federation looks to the south. It's time to retake Kazakhstan. Nice. Also, I didn't realize we have a. 0.1 billion. Nice. But the birth of the collective uh, security treaty organization. The Russian Federation, recently risen from the ashes of the Soviet Union, seemingly defied all international expectations with the founding of this collective security trade, uh, treaty organization. A military alliance spirited by the Federation, aiming to stop all incursions in Eurasia by the Iron Heights Pact and the Cold Prosperity Sphere. Uh, President Shukshin declared in Novosibirsk that the Russian Federation or people need to be in charge of its destiny going forward, stating that Russia needs to bear the weight of its responsibilities once more. We must be able to take, the, take action when it's necessary and be able to remain neutral without bearing obligations to foreign nations. The Iron Heights Pact and the Sphere have not been receptive of the formal entry of another superpower into the Cold War, declaring Russia's recent actions to be upsetting their already fragile global balance. A new order rises. And as I read this last time, so you want to read Our Southern Neighbor again, please go ahead. So we cannot do this one, because that because we did actually help Kazakhstan reunify. Um, so we can't invade them like this, which sucks, but we'll have to go with the extended olive branch. Our relationship with the Kazakh people have been less than stellar over the course of our history. Invasion, subjugation, and exploitation. Russia's legacy in Central Asia has been marked by cruelty and violence. With the recent reunification of our state into a single federation of peoples, a unique opportunity presents itself to right our past wrongs and let bygones be bygones. We'll reach out to Kazakhstan on a new footing, footing on one of equality rather than uh, the, the slavery. Uh, regional report of the Republic of Kazakhstan. Since fall of the Union. In 1945, the Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic, also defunct in a fraction of various warlord states and cliques of popular dominance over the steppe. The decades-long Kazakh Civil War ended with the President Sabit Mukhanov uni unifying the region and establishing the Republic of Kazakhstan. The Republic of Kazakhstan has adopted a federal system, similar to the Russian Federation, with a functioning multi-party system in place with elections in place. The ministry has observed the treatment of ethnic Russians in the region to be satisfactory to the standards of the Russian Federation. However, the country has yet to fully recover from the civil war with much of the population gripped by poverty. Conclusion. The Republic of Kazakhstan is not considered a threat to the Russian people by the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation. Military intervention in the region is unnecessary. No war this year, them, but darn it. I'm messing Kazakhstan. If we're not invading them, uh, declares war on the Republic of Finland. We are going to go to war with them eventually, with other people, so, and it's not too far away. The land that Kazakhstan inhabits, while barren on the surface, harbors great potential for growth within our sphere. Uh, investing in the local economy would be good for a step in properly moving our relationship past cordial partners and into a new area of shared prosperity. Can I just sign next them? Oh my god. We'll spend a half a billion dollars. Whatever. Increases their GDP. Our growth will increase by 3.5 while well, inflation increases by 1%. Wow. That's a lot of growth. Also, do we have anything here as well? We want to take a quick look. Uh, no major bells are being discussed, which is good, good, good. It's only 73. And we want to get this up to 50, but it's already pretty good where it's at. Treaty Nova Seversk. The day has come. Our diplomats have prepared for the final drafts for the official reunification of our peoples. While the lands of Kazakhstan have been binded. Uh, binded to us since the days of our Tsardom, has always been within the lens of exploitation. With the Treaty of Novosibirsk, we move forward not as enemies, but as brothers, setting an example for the future democracies, generations not from now to follow. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I have, we have a cup of green tea here. It keeps nice and toasty and warm. Um, this is actually green, but it's going to get much worse soon because we will need to change our uh, template. Hmm. Special forces, huh? Go low. We're going to way more where we're headed to go to war with Germany. Way, 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 way more. Look to the west. But we'll see. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the comments was, no drum rolls. Uh, which I, I think I forgot to throw in every single video. I always forget how to do that, which sucks. Um, not bad. Hey, that's pretty good. 
10%, almost 11% growth. Not good enough, though. Oh, here we go. Expand your influence in Central Asia. We go to war with other people. The issue of a lot of stock. Um, let's see to Northern Frontier. During Operation Bar Barbosa, or Barbarossa, we had to fight against the many heads that had known as the National Daddyism. A blood of struggle on his own, we received the death blow and the finished launch invasion toward Northern Heartlands, taking advantage of our weakened state at the slowest point. Now we've returned to the land drunk, we've taken from us no longer, so long ago in a cry for liberation, as a fence to neglect the strength we now possess. In time, we'll release a full vengeance of the Russian bear and undo uh, one of the great stains of our nation's past. Oh, we can't do that. Oh, in Operation Nice Dog. Oh, wait, we're not going to go to war with them? Bro. The Alpha Liberation grows ever nearer as the infantry gather and mechanized core assembles and the aircraft begin to take off in the frozen runways. President Shushin has authorized the execution of Russia's masterpiece, Operation Nice Dad. Our preparations and technological edge will enable us to cut through the Finnish nation in mere months and with our modern forms of war breaking the backs of many any potential resistance that we may encounter soon, the humiliation of the first winter war will be avenged. Huh. Issue of lot of stuff. When the old Soviet Empire uh, Union collapsed, the uh, Japanese Empire was within seeds in the cities of Vladivostok and portions of the Far East from the collapsing Soviet government. At the time, the Russian people were powerless to stop the Imperial Army from marching into their lands, to most, including many Russians. Vladivostok was seen uh, forever out of the reach until now. With the Russian Federation united and stronger than ever, the present feels that the time has finally come to turn the attention of the nation back towards the East and ad address the issue of our occupied Far Eastern lands. Um, you guys are good. You guys are what? You are just normal infantry, 28 combat, which is not big enough. I've got some thick boys that would do that. So you guys come over here. Um, are you in the... They are with us. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, you guys do that. You guys do that. Supply's going to be really just god-awful, so good luck. Yes, you have a lot of a stock. 73. Uh, what else do we have around here? It's a little ahead of time. A little too ahead of time for me, personally. Uh, it's a way too ahead of time for us, personally, as well. Um, 1980, not quite. 45. Ah, get more up. Oh, screw it. Military march in Novosibirsk. Contact the Russian partisans. Oh, this one first. Although we do not see conflict with the Empire of Japan, the Federation must show to them and the globe that Russia is no longer plagued by the weakness of the old Soviet Union. We are rapidly modernizing a militarily powerful nation capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the globe's largest superpower. General Dmitry Glinka has recommended that in order to further intimidate the Japanese, we should march uh, the all-Russian army down the streets of Novosibirsk. Some of the parades once held in the Red Square of Moscow. Contact the Russian partisans. For decades, the Russian North partisans in Ottoman Manchuria, particularly the Berobidzan Oblast, have fought tirelessly and valiantly against the Japanese oppressors in their long effort for freedom. With the reunification of Russia, their efforts have only intensified as they now fight to rejoin the motherland. <coughs> With the Federation now aiming to retake the occupied city near Vladivostok, perhaps now will be the perfect time to reach out to these partisan groups and better coordinate uh, and supply their efforts against the Manchurian and Japanese authorities in the region. The Falcon's proposal. Shukshin rummed his hands on the table patiently as he waited for Pokushkin to arrive. With the Federation, Russian Federation reforming and preparing for what's ahead, Vasily felt the nation was finally ready to address the matter of Vladivostok, a city built by Russian hands, populated by Russians. Whoopsie. Uh. I pressed enter by accident. Uh, <clears throat> oh. Oh. Yeah. Well. Yeah, with better to know, take the occupied city of Vladivostok, perhaps it would be a perfect time to reach other partisans and groups and better coordinate and supply the efforts against the Manchurian and Japanese authorities in the region. Uh, Falcon's proposal, yeah. Uh, a city built by Russian hands, my apologies, popular by Russians, stolen by the Japanese Empire at gunpoint. Can you do it? Can you really pull off a negotiation with a superpower? His popularity would skyrocket if they could retake their far eastern lands, but if he were to fail in this endeavor, the increasingly anxious president ran a hand through his hair, sifting through the possibilities in his head. Rodan Q. Prokrushkin has entered his office, acknowledging the ace's presence with a nod, the writer gestured to the empty seat for Prokrushkin to take. No, I called you here, Alexander, we can't ignore blood of stock. The Falcon Knight, placing several files down on Vasily's desk, I've spoken with some of my colleagues and we've come up with several proposals to deal with the Japanese. Shukshin took one of the folders and opened it. Most of our solutions involve a Japanese leading economic treaty that will last for the next couple years. We could allow their Zaibatsu to set up shop in Chita and Magadan for resources. We can get investments from them to help develop the Far East, in addition to reclaiming Vladivostok. Alternatively, we could offer them support through the current oil crisis. The Falcon Grin pointed at the second folder. This one gives them a deal they literally can't reject. To that said, Rodal looked like the Japan is on their hands and knees begging us for oil. Vladivostok will be ours in the East for March. <clears throat> Shoulder to shoulder, marching proudly, the face looked toward the presidential palace as bands blared songs of praise of the army and their motherland. Rows of infantry hold the weapons forward, boots hitting the ground in, per in sync, in perfect formation. Lines and lines of trucks carrying patriotic soldiers standing in attention, their bodies as rigid as columns of steel beasts that fall behind them. The newest batch of Russian made tanks roll past, their armor shining under, under the sun. 
Uncountable our mounts of artillery hug the sides of the men that haul them along as the cavalry division trots by, holding their bayonets up to the sky. Shukshin gazed upon the never-ending lines of soldiers from the balcony and felt a few motions took at his heartstrings. Pride. Pride of the new federation he had built. No, he can have hope in this godforsaken world. A bit of confidence, maybe. The spray was barely a fraction of the federation's actual army, which had become a force capable of standing up to the armies of Germany and Japan, but above all else, these motions and certainty. Uncertainty about the future. Would the negotiations with Japan fail? Could they beat back the Germans? What if they couldn't liberate Moscow? What if they uh, Shukshin was snapped out of his slats by a firm hand on his back. He looked over his shoulder and saw the concerned faces of not only his cabinet, but Pokrushkin as well. His eyebrows raised with the concern of looking in his eyes. Look below, Vasily. They're all marching for you, and you're, you're all in your depression. I believe you didn't come this far to fall, fail. That should be one of the proudest moments of your life, so act like it. The strong man practically yelled at him. Shukshin slowly turned around, nodding, I, I guess you're right. You must have faith in our nation. Faith in yourself, my friend. Do you remember the oath we made all those years ago? I've forgotten what we swore to that day. We broke away from the Central Siberian Republic. No matter the struggles ahead, no matter the enemies facing this coming storm, we will free your people, no matter the cost. Tell them to raise hell. Approach the sphere. <clears throat> Partisans in Ottoman Manchuria have been rallied behind the Russian Federation and prepared to fight hard to rejoin the motherland. And Karbarovsk and Vladivostok, rebels under the guidance of our agents of the Sulizba Besopasnosti, are ready to raid Imperial uh, facilities. With all the pieces now in place, Shukshin is prepared to get the order. Give him hell, boys! A lance in the woods. Nice. Very nice. How does it take a sip of tea? Mm. And try not to drip it on myself. Whoopsie. And a lance in the woods. Dimitri slowly approached an isolated shack located deep within the forests of Berold Bizan, just north of the city of the same name. Oh, which one do we want here? Uh, <clears throat> After some investigating and advanced questioning, he had learned that the former resistance leader lived quietly. Halt! Not one step further, an old, spoke, old, voice, old voice spoke from the, within the trees. Dimitri searched around the forest before his eyes settled on an old man sitting, standing from afar with a rifle in his hands. Uh, are you the one ruffling up people to seek, seeking to find me? The old man asked. I am. My name is Dmitry Ivanov. Sluzba Besonoposnosti. Here on behalf of President Shukshin, I am here to see you, Peter. Dmitry replied, hands raised, assuring me no harm. Peter lowered his rifle as he eyed Dmitry. I've heard of you. You've done plenty of bad things. Russia's monster. Tell me, what brings you here? Peter asked. As Dmitri approached this old man. Ooh. We don't want to point out. <clears throat> but as the Shukshin really wants you to rally your old comrades in arms, so chaos, cause as much chaos as you can. The president aims to retake Barrel Bazan and believes that the starting the resistance will make the Japanese more open negotiation with the Federation, Dmitri explained, finally lowering his hands. President Shukshin, he's so fixated on Moscow these days, I must admit, I'm surprised he's even interested in the region, Peter replied, shocked to the news. Peter turned away from Dmitri, thinking to himself for a moment, when Russia shattered, his resistance had been left to fend for themselves before the Japanese finally broke them in Khabarovsk. Now the president was home of his homeland, reunited, wanted him to jump into the fray. Peter lost many of his brothers and sisters in arms in an impossible mission to free the Amur Basin from Japanese rule and it amounted to nothing. But that was without a strong Russia to support them. Perhaps this time there would finally be a chance to have success. Maybe there's a chance that he can finally do what he had always wanted to do. Liberate his fellow Russians. Peter sighed as he turned around to face Dmitri. Consider the Russian resistance reborn. Just simple talking. The wild step. <clears throat> as the banners of the Federation fly over the lands of the Kazakhs, a new and simultaneously familiar front has opened up to, uh, to our southern frontier, the lands of Central Asia. After the process of disintegration and chaos since the fall of the Union three decades ago, now follows us to restore order to this land. Soon we'll be able to usher in the prosperity that many of the people the steps have longed for, and march shoulder to shoulder through the many struggles that await the Federation in the coming war. A future. <clears throat> ah, so that's activated. To Agent Eagle. As you may be aware, negotiations will begin with the Russian between the Russian Federation and the Empire of Japan shortly. As it stands, many variables will be factored into Japan's decisions during these critical days. As you know, Russians, you're expected to fulfill your duties to arouse the spirit of our people in the region so that the Japanese strongly reconsider their position in Manchuria. In the case of is intercepted, you will be expected to be creative in your interpretation of this order without specific instructions. <coughs> Notice, while these tumultuous times will inspire brazen attitudes and actions in your contingent, it must be stressed how negatively attacking citizens, even Japanese, will reflect on the Russian people. We are in the delicate times. Do not make the mistakes which will lead diplomats to make unworthy and untrue acquisitions. Your benefactor, rouse their spirit indeed. Central foothold. Where to be peace? Oh boy. But, oh, we're, gonna be, we're not going to be peace for a while. Approach the sphere. While the uncontrollable chaos erupting throughout Outer Manchuria and the rising tension between the Federation and the co prosperity sphere over the disputed territory, perhaps now is the best time to bury the hatchet with the Japanese and discuss the fate of Vladivostok in the Far East. Central Asia. Oh, hello. Oh! Is that us already? This is weird. But okay. Oh, we need to call in Kazakhstan if, if possible. Oh, yeah, we, we also got make sure we got Iran. Oh, I forgot to get this to them, too. Crap. Um, uh, Central Asia, like most other regions of the former Union, collapsed into a minor stateless during the 50s, somehow. The minor stateless that emerged afterwards have collapsed into an unrecognizable state of anarchy due to the egregious meddling by the Kingdom of Afghanistan, backed by the core of Prosperity Sphere. 
A situation so disastrous for the public a provision of services that we can easily enter as a force to liberate the people from the banditry that they are living under. It helps our claims of respecting their people and bringing democracy are actually true, unlike the Bolsheviks or meddling Afghans. Uh, properly. Plan a well executed strike into the region will prove all that's ne needed in order to restore civilian frontier once more. It's unlikely they'll face any resistance at all, and that any we do we face will be extremely local and outmatched against our modern army. We're urging to move quickly before the other powers do. People deserve safety above all else. Ooh, Turkmenistan? Yes. And how are we doing with this? We're on stage four. Nice. Crit oh, credit rating was improved. Hey, we're intermediate. And we're our own sphere. Which is not very many billions, but whatever. Well, at least we're not 10th. We are our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 in the world for the biggest GDP. Not bad. 10% uh, growth. 3%. Very nice. Very nice. Inflation is a little high. A little too high for my liking, but whatever. Um, what is next, my friends? Uh, un develop the Onega Airfield. <coughs> As the soldiers of the Federation fought across the vast expanse of the anarchy, one singular truth emerged from the truth of modern war. The truth that ne being the need for total air dominance amidst the execution of any military operation with the alternative being guaranteed defeat. We must make sure we're not caught unprepared for this amidst our finished endeavor. President Shukshin has been convinced by the military high command to initiate another series of construction works in Onega, primarily aimed at the maintenance and expansion of existing airfields and aircraft facilities. While this is primarily aimed at war with Finland, it may also serve as well in the coming fight with the Germans, too. Kyrgyzstan? Nice. Very good. Occupation. Uh, if you want to buy the occupation, please go ahead. I think I've ever read that, maybe, actually, but it is what it is. Maybe we should focus on real issues instead of this nonsense. Yay! More garrisons, that's fine. Because we're need we're, we're gonna need a big old army here. We're not we literally don't have enough manpower for what we need really. Uzbekistan. Very nice. What are you all up to? There you go. Martin Borman's dead, oh god. Who will keep the German Eagle flying now? Okay. Tajikistan, yes. Reorganize Central Asia. Well, we will occupy Central Asia now. Oh. Do not get... We don't get cores on them. Oh, man. They're starting for the oil crisis. What is this? The oligarchy? Kyrgyzstan? I should have not clicked that. I wanted to annex them all. Man. It's not cool. <coughs> Oh well. A central foothold. Well, while the forces march on to the Transoxiana, our officials cannot simply co copy what happened in the Kazakhstan. Due to the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Fergana Valley was never exploited as it should, thus the region is only sparsely urbanized and a little infrastructure was built up outside major cities, rendering modern administration difficult. Similar to how we re recovered the frozen city of Norilsk and Sibgrad, railway shall pave the way from Novosibirsk to Tashkent and Samarkand. Approaching the sphere. After several weeks, oh boy, of chaos in outer Manchuria and growing tension between the Russian Federation and Dayan upon Taikoku, Ta Ta the Japanese finally approached our government and asked that we meet in the city of Beijing to discuss the future of outer Manchuria. With the government eager to green the occupied Far East from the Japanese, we have agreed to meet them and have sent our top diplomats to go to the Japanese. Let's begin. Develop Tashkent. I could do this one too, but is that really worth it? 0 0.025 billion for two air bases. The Great Barrier Empires. As we advance further southwards, we have encountered an old challenger in the region who is not too keen on Russian boots marching southwards. However, waging war against a state as infamous as at a guerrilla warfare as Afghanistan is simply not possible in the current situation. It's about time we brought them to, to the negotiating table. We should prevent further conflict. We we'll to find a way to compensate the Afghans whose Central Asian ambition remains as strong as ever. Whichever direction this takes us, we'll be ready to face them down and show them that we're not afraid to defend the innocents against the advance, advancements of tyrants. Oh, what the heck is this? Japanese leverage and Russian leverage. Depending on our leverage, we want to have a bigger chance of regaining lost territories. Secure it in order to advance to the next round. Japanese officials are being bribed. Increase the Japanese leverage by three. Complete this action. At least support of Magadan. You can only take him once. Seek American support. Once per round, meet with the Japanese. Okay. Um, it's fine with me too. Support Russian partisans. We'll see what happens with that. At least 40. Oh. Well, I guess we shouldn't have gotten rid of that Navy. 
Oh, well, I'll take him once. Once per round. I guess we'll see, but Russo-Japanese negotiations begin. After weeks of partisan chaos and rising tension between the Russian Federation, uh, between the, uh, between basically both nations, the Japanese finally agreed to enter into negotiations with the Russian Federation on the disputed territory of Outer Manchuria with the hope that's of reaching a peaceful uh, idea with the nuclear armed power. Diplomats from the Russian Federation co prosperity sphere have been met in the Chinese city of Beijing where the negotiations are to take place. International observers from the U US of A to the Italian Empire have also gathered in the city to observe the negotiations on behalf of their respective governments. The discussions between the Japanese and the Russians may change the future for both Russia and Japan for many years to come. Develop, develop Tashkent, huh? Graveyard of Empires, huh? <coughs> Once Tashkent shined as a beacon of Central Asia, a splendor reflecting the pride of its people. On paper, it's even considered to be the capital of the region, with most infrastructure routed traced towards the metropolis of the steppe, however, it's not meant to be. When the Union fell, the heartland of Russia was not only the place that suffered. The tendrils of anarchy and chaos sunk themselves in every piece of Central Asia and its northern neighbor, with Tashkent being reduced to a mere fraction of its former work wonder, but now it's time we fix this. New developmental programs will be launched, aimed to restore the economic potential of the region and establish ourselves in the hearts and minds of the tortured peoples of the steppe. Uh, some of the comments included, you should discredit the ARPP so you get coalition unity. Oh, I can discredit them. Well, that'd be cool. Someone says, a uh, new era for Russia is now coming into fruition. Also, will you play as Curtis LeMay's presidency? Oh, uh, we'll see, maybe. And someone says, can you do TNO USA as a progressive MCS? The U.S. accepts. Excellent news. Our plea for aid has been accepted by the United States of America. When we enter into negotiations with the Japanese, the State Department will be there to immediate and suddenly turn the negotiations to our favor. We might just have a chance of pulling this off. Our reports indicate that the Japanese have taken Americans' investment as pressure except for claims. Of course, this is correct. Even the nations closely tied to the co-prosperity sphere are pre pressing for the Japanese to find an honorable resolution to the Vladivostok issue, for fear of retaliation from the O of M. While well, military action from the Americans is almost certainly off the table, we won't tell the Japanese. Let the specter of another Pacific theater dance in their heads and their imaginations will do the rest. Spasibo, Americanets! Nice, 6331 overall, not bad. We're developing the Onega airfields, which is nice. But, must we fight? Already we've lost many men to this tide of war through our campaign of the unification of Russia and our war against the Germans. Already the war hawks have been clamoring for a war with Afghanistan and want us to push it with a wave of an arbor and just to coat the mountains and napalm and craters, but this has no basis in reality. What we truly need are more diplomatic forms of communications with the Afghan government. The terrain, although shaky from our incursions in Central Asia, still has grounds for negotiations. We'll send a delegation over in order to find some sort of agreement with the graveyard of empires and it will secure our border in a more peaceful manner. Well, this, we would have to be able to wrangle most of our old sphere of influence before the collapse of the Union back under the newly formed Federation. Cool. They get more stability. Cool. Not bad. Oh, we can lose our claim. Oh, man. Well, if we have to. If we have to. It's almost 75. Continue doing all this industrial stuff. That's fine. What do we have over here? Ah. Got some more money? Well, with those. What is this? Support Russian partisans? 100% chance increase with leverage by 7. Okay. Mm hmm. How is Project Millennia coming? We're still stage 4, which is going all right. 1.2, you know what? We can invest at least 1. Uh, 0.22, more political power there, too. That's fine. And, uh... Oh, must be fight, yeah. Uh, provide winter gear. Perhaps the most obvious part of fighting in such a land is, it, is the necessity for proper planning and logistical operations to ensure the steady flow of necessary military equipment in the harsh lands of the north. Of course, we've learned from our past mistakes. We've been planning for this exact issue, and the military staff are already rolling out all the equipment necessary and distributing it to the soldiers on the front. Through innovation and tactical mastery, we shall make Finland cower before the might of the Federation. Hopefully. Suns shine in Central Asia. Decades after a dramatic invasion brought ruin and anarchy to the lands of the East. The sun begins to arch over the horizon, and a shine down upon the inhabitants of the steppe. Flags of Russian and tribal flags with flying unison, as one scorched earth begins to heal and cities are built up from the ground again. We brought once inconceivable levels of prosperity to this land, all because of our friendly cooperation and strength. Soon, our newfound brethren will be at our side as we launch a fun offensive in our Russia's history. And when we triumph, will be the greatest example of the strength our people's bonds are, as we anxiously look to the horizon of history. Hey, poverty is slowly getting better. The issue of Beryl Bazan. The Beryl Bazan Oblast has been the source of the per partisan movement in Ottoman Manchuria, who has been battling the Japanese occupation of their homeland since their illegal annexation of the territory in the late 40s. The land is the majority of Russian province, who only wish to return to the warm embrace of the motherland. With the return of the barrel of the Zan, the large chunk of the Russian followers of the movement would go with it. I'm sure they'd be happy to have it off their hands. Japan accepts! Great news from the negotiating table. Our diplomats have won their province of Beryl Bazan through hard-nosed stubbornness, a bit of compensation, and some fascinating, totally coincidental revolts by the ethnic Russians of the region. We're one step closer to achieving our goals of uniting all continents of Russia. However, we're not done with the negotiations, or people, and especially our hawkish politicians, want more, along with the partisans we've recently liberated. While Beryl Bazan was a hotbed of Russian insurgents, our people at home in Adamanturia want us to go further, to push for a Khabarovsk, Alla Primorsky Krai, and even Vladivostok. We'll take continued negotiations, careful negotiations. Some strong arming, and perhaps some foreign assistance, but we will push through the rest of our abilities for the motherland and our people. One down, two to go. Decrease efficiency of Russian partisan groups. Ah, so they own a lot of this. Wow. 
Yeah, that's a lot. All right, then. More leverage. Uh, I still want to do this one, but we'll take that one eventually. Failed. We have exercises. Cool. We're still not working anything here, so. Um, oh, they're very friendly. They, uh, you guys said, uh, gained five opinion make token concessions. Is more effective against members of the coalition. So down with party leaders, accused of populism. Lose stand opinion. So accuse of populism, we they lose stand opinion of us, whatever. A coalition will like this move. And now we're six percent. Can we do anything here? No. Okay. Cool. They live up the Murmansk Railway. After years of being under their Finnish overlords, the lands of the Karelian Republic of Murmansk will have been liberated. This will not be the end of the struggle in Karelia, however, we must not connect the region with an administration that has been detached from for decades. We are fitter to fund the existing Murmansk Railway to not only connect the new oblast to existing infrastructure, but to give a central way to coordinate supply and the coal and sparsely developed pieces of our nation. Once well, only started, sets the stage for future infrastructure in Karelia to bring the region up to speed with the rest of our federation, and they return to agree a bit of as many expected, the Japanese have agreed to peacefully return the Barrel Bazan Oblast, saying it would be in the best interest to do so. With the issue of Barrel Bazan now concluded, we're presented with two more options. It could end the negotiations here, or perhaps Tesla Lux to take the city of Karbarovsk. Blagoveshanks. Oh, how do you pronounce that? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I don't know where that is. Go home. Noble muscles go, huh? Cool. All oh, right, sixty still. Seek American sport. Oh, uh, here's over twelve. We're still sixty. Oh, okay, so we're here. Okay. Actually, since we're still here, there you go. Yay. Duma. Yay. All right. Oh, what is this? Um, it's fine, I don't care. At this point, it doesn't really matter. Deficit's green, which is nice. It's still, that GDP ratio is getting a little higher. Growth is only 12%. Ah, uh, not good enough. Look to the west. After the necessary expansion and fortification of the northern, eastern, and southern borders, there lay one last direction to the west. Our great federation has come so far through tundra and fire to once more standing at the precipice of a great and noble crusade against tyranny. Our Slavic brethren toil, suffer, and starve under the German jackboot in a land that has been enslaved and raised in the image of a madman. After years of preparation, we're finally prepared to look out west for an inevitable but sacred just war against the enemy of all who seek freedom, who live in the hope of a better, more righteous world, the greater German Reich. Also, I do want to show you that. 83 is nice. Um, here, they're led by Gerhard Klopfer. So, he was Bowman's, uh, if Bowman was Hitler's continuation, then Klopfer is Bowman's continuation, so. He's a dude! I don't think he's any, oh, end of the ride. Awesome in Germany, ah, so it is the end there, so, cool. And let's see what's next. Very interesting. 90, 94, nice. Oh, the Japanese are exercising against, oh. At least nine divisions. Because they're by eight, wow. Y'all better skedaddle. Oh, wait, we made. Oh my god, we made 30 divisions. Oh, train, y'all. Look to the west. A meeting to the high command. The presence called Al Porokushkin and all military leaders across the Federation return to the Nova Sibiris can convene in the war room to plan the Federation's strategy in the upcoming war against the German Reich. And what preparations all Russian army needs to make before we can begin the liberation of Eastern Europe from Nazi tyranny? Oh, good. We got another one of these guys. Good, very good, very good, very good. Oh, we have more? Oh, nice. Very good. How many more do we have? Mm hmm. Well, that's not bad, but I'm going to explode it even harder later soon. Ah, uh, soon end the Suza Bezo Pasnosti. Ah, uh, Pokorushkin has made it clear to the President that if we were to liberate a secret Moscow from the Nazi occupiers and repel them from our lands, the best course of action would be to send an agent of the Suza Bezo Pasnosti behind enemy lines to gather intelligence, and weakening our Rex Commissariat must convene from within. The meeting. Oh boy. There's 64, that's not good. There we go. Shukshin has gathered the others in his office for an important meeting, quite possibly the most important one in a very long time. They had decided that an invasion of Germany would be the only way to reclaim Moscow, but now they had to answer another question, how? 
The Vemoth is the strongest land force on the planet, and although the Oil Crust has definitely devastated the German army, they would still be far um, from a morse so the Federation could just gobble up, contrary to what many of the proud officials thought. And what could be Russia's final chance against a Han there's no room for error? The us, Shukshin, not being much of a military man himself, had instructed both Kushkin and Novikov and other officials to come up with a strategy. After a shouting match and several arguments, a preparation plan had finally been made. The Falcon. Call for the Slutzba Bezel and Pasnosti to infiltrate the Muscovy and destabilize the already unstable colony as the all Russian army marches west, he proclaimed. Partisans will lead the way, ripping off vital infrastructure and terrorizing local garrisons, giving us the advantage in a quick offensive. On the other hand, Novikov urges caution. To pray for us with victory is dangerous, and we must plan accordingly for the Battle of Attrition. Despite the oil crisis, the Panzer still remain deadly, and we all surely remember how the German tanks have ripped through the Russian lines twice now. We must also consider a strong defensive. Oh, look at this. this um, a line where we can grind the, down the armies before we retaliate. With slow and steady progress, we will win this war. Strategy and planning is key to victory, usually. But no plan survives contact with the enemy. Oh my gosh. Weaken their administration. Uh, the right to come sword on the territory is tenuous at best, often battling partisans and rebels across the nation, primarily to near a border. With the right man shot dead by our agents and certain individuals going missing, their weak administration will rapidly turn to dust, breaking any illusion of control they think they have over the occupied lands of Western Russia. Break their encroachment. Uh, uh, encryption. Cracking the Muscovy encryptions will grant the all Russian army unlimited access to all the Nazi supply lines, battle tactics, and troop movements across the Muscovy, giving us superior intelligence over our enemy in the upcoming conflict against the Einheit's back that prepare Western defenses. Novikov made it clear that it would be foolish to not prepare any defenses for the warhead. Our Western border is vulnerable to German advance, lacking the necessary fortifications to hold a potential advance in our lands and the traps. We must begin mobilizing the nation and prepare for Japan war. Japan refuses to return Khabarovsk. Despite our efforts, Japan has refused to hand over Khabarovsk and Outer Manchuria, stating it was simply too much land to hand over to the Russian Federation. Should we just take stock of what we have and sign the treaty issue, asking whether they're willing to make a deal for Khabarovsk? We'll offer a compromise. You know, we're, we're here to compromise, my friends. As we're trying to weaken their administration like we were earlier, as well as break their encryption, but... They propose a compromise. Oh, they propose it. Good. Unlike Berobidzan, Japan is not as eager to hand over Khabarovsk. They've instead proposed a deal. In exchange for handing over Khabarovsk, they've asked that they maintain their resource rights in the outer Manchuria and gain access to the tungsten research of the Magadan Oblast. Uh, no thank you. Of course not. Why would we want that? Leverage? It's never enough. Um, where are we at for this right now? They agreed to return. Oh, okay then. After some negotiations, the Japanese have finally agreed to return Khabarovsk and out of Manchuria to the Russian Federation. I feel like I'm reading Khabarovsk wrong. Khabarovsk. 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 Our diplomats have celebrated this victory as much as we have stolen by the Japanese. We will now be peacefully returning to Russia where it belongs. Nabavavazda. More powerful. Construction speed. Consumer goods goes need. Consumer goods goes down. More cap. Ah, good, 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 good. Working on any sort of cipher. Okay, we're working on four of them. That's nice. Very smart. Oh, right. Oh, happy July, everybody. 1974. <sighs> we just gotta wait until we get to Moscow. Really? Or at least, okay, maybe even Berlin. Can only be taken once. Ooh. Okay, so negotiations for this one. The bribing officials. There's not much we can really do about that because we do have our divisions down here, and they are not suffering some f from supply issues. Once per round, okay. Okay. Why not? Economy-wise, 68.7. It is slowly going up because we are making more divisions and stuff like that. But growth is going up too. Inflation is going up. But it should be okay once we get Moscow back, right? Yeah. Yeah. What was this? At least no divisions are in Blagovoshchenks. If not selected. When selected, 65% there decrease our leverage by 3, 35% decrease leverage by 2, increase tension. Oh, it went down. Prepare Western defenses. Doom foretold. Daniel was pouring concrete to form the base of a communications con uh, uh, bunker when he felt it. The sky was too wide, too blue, too sunny. Perfect flying for conditions for a German fighter. The horizon was clear and he knew the Federation Air Force was too powerful to allow the Luftwaffe to simply waltz in and strafe him, but every time he turned his back, he could feel the bullets ripping through his skin. Wait, was that the whine of a diving airplane? Daniel's hands began to tremble. He felt nauseous and weak and like he'd been deprived of food for a week. His heart pounded out of his chest and couldn't get enough air. Why couldn't he breathe? Daniel doubled over, gasping. Sweat poured from his brow to his thick beard. He held out a hand to set himself and collapsed into the dirt. Brother, brother, can you hear me? Someone was slapping him. My son, can you breathe? Who are, who are you? Daniel croaked. I am Father Dimitri Pennon, the unknown man said. Do you need an ambulance? Daniel shook his head in the affirmative. His voice was barely whispered. I couldn't the sky. His voice showed off. Father Pennon frowned. I understand you, my son. Lufafo is no kinder to the people of Gaini than your home. I see you in the same terror that affects all Russians, but do not despair. Christ is with you, and you will not allow his flock to come to harm. Daniel's eyes filled with tears. I'm afraid, Father. Father Pan is simply nodded. I know, I'm afraid too. Let me pray for you. 
He places his right hand on Daniel's forehead, wiping away the sweat and muck that crowned him. Father Almighty blesses man as he labors for the protection of others. Save him from the snares and temptations of Satan and shield his back from all wounds and iniquities. Make your presence known to him that he may be comforted by your love. Saint Dimphna, great wonder worker in every affliction of mine, I humbly implore your intercession with Jesus through Mary in this man's hour of need. Do not ever leave his side. In the distance, the wine of the ambulance grew ever closer, for thou art our sanctification. Nice. Build up air bases on northern, guard on northern flank. As we make our defensive preparations for the coming war with Germany, our advisors have pointed out that one of the Federation's greatest weaknesses, the battle at sea. The Germans will undoubtedly have naval superiority throughout the war, may use this advantage to exploit our northern weaknesses to breach our northern coastline. We must take necessary measures to reinforce northern Russia and ensure the Germans make no further than the cold shores of Arkhangelsk. That would be best. That would be, of course, for the best. Um, ah, another division. Good, 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 good. Where are you all at? In all honesty, I'm gonna just throw you on the line here, anyways. Spread out. Feel good about yourself. Um, sure. Hey, it went up. Nice. Two more divisions. Good. Break the encryption. Another late night. <clears throat> Crap, I'm tired. Get her mother. What a coffee? I don't know if they have any sh twin sugars for you, but I can check. Screw off, John. Smiled Taros before replying. Let's try one more permutation, then I'll see if Georgi can roll up some food. Did they feed you all as, as well back in America? Kira asked. She sat down into an elderly officer next to John and so continued tapping into the computer. He scoffed. No, see, I've never dreamed of eating potatoes three times a day. Who knew it would be so good for my complexion? John said. Here, I'll try another variant of the Ellis method. This time I'm programming the computer to execute chosen cipher text delta with a new orientation Maxim taught us last week. Maxim doesn't know crap, uh, screw it, stupid uh, Tomsky, Kira said. Poor guy couldn't find his own feet if they weren't attached to him. Be polite, uh, Kira Gorkoronova. Uh, Gor uh, at least Maxim knows how to, uh, how to vote, John said. You think of that after the crap Russia went through under the Revolutionary Front. People like you would not learn to vote for Reds. He finished him putting his commands into the running computer and pressed under key anyway. That'll be a few minutes. Another round of poker, Kira said. Or asked, maybe a Svetlana can loan you some money. Oh, you think they didn't teach me how to bluff at the company? The hours passed and semi boredom. Kira had scooped up another winning hand and John's launch money when the computer rolled to a halt. Crap, finally, Kira said. I get it. Uh, or I'll get it. She limped over to the computer monitor, expecting this, that the intercepted German message would be a garbled mess as always. Oh, crap, she replied. What's wrong? Orders from Hoffman Ve Vegena, she said, trembling. Fighter Wing 107 redeployed at Navgard Airbase of 1700 hours. Wait, we cracked it? Cool. Nice. That's just from Barbarossa. I want to wait for that one. They are broken. The Sluzba uh, Bezo Pasnosti's final target are the officer corps of the Muscovy. Wiping out the most experienced and most innovative military staff will cripple their ability to fight effectively, or fight our troops on the field, and completely dismoralize their pitiful auxiliaries and break their will to fight the advancing all Russian army. And we do have another cup of coffee here to keep us warm. You know, honestly, minus 20%? Holy crap. That's that's a very strong. They get less defense on core territory? Very nice, too. Molinio? It's coming along. It's still coming along. Um, economy is, well, slowly getting higher and higher, and we'll make it explode soon, too. But, we have Muscovine. Ah, Vata Venk. 2-3 million manpower, no divisions. So even if they had a division, it would be very strong. But no divisions. Need more political power, too. Oh. <sighs> the old man of the sea. I can't... Freaking believe it, Private Sergei Korolkov said. I traveled all the way from Alex Alexeyeva to see a stupid ocean. Sergeant Barakad Kimlemov merely grunted. The old man sat eating a sandwich, barely offering Private Korolkov his attention at all. You know, the Germans do invade us from the sea, we'll both be killed, Karl Kolkov said. No job to Rome for the land, kid. I'm not a kid, I'm a man. A soldier of the Federation Army. And if those fascist dogs dare, dare to lay a foot upon my nation, so I'll shoot the dudes where they stand. Klim uh, Shrik said. You lied about your age when you volunteered. No, I didn't. Then tell me, Barakat asked, which war look controlled West Russia before the Federation invaded? Uh, Georgi Malenkov? Klimov shook his head. You're so full of crap, I can smell it on your breath. Klimov turned to face Private Kolkov's sh uh, sandwich, dripping tomato juice into the sparse grass. When I fought for the West Siberian People's Republic, I was stationed in Zatos. The gang, uh, the Aryan Brotherhood, seized Perm a, a couple months later. They started testing our borders. A raid here, a feint here, an assassination there. I was reassigned to Lizva. By the time I arrived, the Aryans had already captured the city. You know what they did? Barrow Carl Kopp shook his head no. They went through the city, rounded up everyone, kept their hands off, then left them to starve. You ever seen a two-year-old screaming for his parents with no effing hands? Sergei said nothing. His stomach already turned upside down. 
the Germans did worse than that during the Great Patriotic War, Sergeant Berkot said. Be thankful we wanted to see such things in your dreams. Build up the air bases. It won't matter how many uh, MiG 23s ooh, air, and Yak 28 PPs the Federation has produced to face the Luftwaffe in the sky to be like the airfields require a field or vast fleet. But Kurdish has recommended we expand the existing airfields in Russia as quickly as possible. If we lose the war in the air, we, we lose the war and we lose it quickly. Yeah, as quickly. They are good return, return of a lot of the stock. Glorious. After days of intense silence from the Japanese delegates, the Russian, uh, <coughs> the Japanese, uh, agreed to return the city of Vladivostok back to the Russian Federation. The news has been celebrated by the government as their nation's goals in the first have finally been achieved. A victory for the motherland. Great. Hey, we have the 20 here, huh? Very nice. And we'll also... Ooh, construct additional... Nice, good. Well, for now. Um, do we actually have any more airbases right here? Ooh. Because we do have quite a few planes, I believe. They are broken. Treaty of Beijing. Well, the negotiations are not concluded. The town has come to sign the Treaty of Beijing. Through peaceful means, we've achieved our goals in retaking the uh, occupied Far East. With the signing of the treaty, we'll see its reintegration into the Russian Federation. Millions across Russia have gathered on the streets in celebration and are eagerly waiting to welcome our Russian brothers and sisters back into the warm embrace of our glorious motherland. A victory for the Russian Federation. <coughs> ah, Far Eastern reintegration. So, so this is what we saw earlier in the campaign that was slightly bugged. Ivan, you are very busy. You are an administrator, leader, and a military leader, too. Ah, oh, beautiful. Vladivostok returned to the uh, uh, Russian Federation. After tense negotiations between the Empire of Japan and the Russian Federation, the two nations have been in Beijing to, to send a treaty that would aim to resolve the territorial dispute. The treaty saw the lines about Manchuria and the city of Vladivostok reintegrated into the Russian Federation, and in exchange, Russia would assure the safe passage of the Congo peoples to northern Manchuria and Korea. The celebrations have occurred across the Russian Federation or the nation's diplomatic victory of the Japanese, with Vladivostok returned to Russia. We will await the Russian Federation's next move as they turn their attention to the west where Germany still holds Russia's commissar at Muscovy. A righted, a wronged, righted. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, what else are we going to research? Somebody doing a multi role combat aircraft? It's a bit far ahead of time. We're not using that one either. Heavy aircraft, we can do that, but we don't really have to. We're already on doing all of these. I guess we do this one next. They are broken. Lessons from Barbarossa. Condemn the Reich. Mobilize the Federation. The plan. Alright, so we invade. And that only takes like... That's literally uh, like a month. Um, okay, so at this point, we gotta get ready to go then. Give it one more month and we'll start... Yeah, you know what? Screw it. You come here too. Um, capture equipment ratio. We're definitely gonna need that probably. Capture space. This is just straight infantry. <clears throat> so you're gonna do something like that. Give one more month so our budget isn't gonna explode completely. That's fine, and I'll actually I'll have you guys do this too. You know what's good, we're just gonna rid them all now. Um, we don't have that much army XP. 20 comp with is okay. We might be, be okay with getting away with this. <clears throat> uh, you know what? We'll just keep it 28th comp with XP for now. Uh, I don't feel that's going to be enough divisions. I just don't know, because we only have so much manpower, honestly, so. Evacuation orders. <coughs> I'm telling you, the Rex Commissar isn't going to last very long. We need to. The German administrator was discussing the conference room when the Wehrmacht officer strenuously opened the door. Under my orders of the Fuhrer, all officials within this building are, and uh, many across Muscovy and itself, are to be moved to Germany proper. This building has need to be evacuated immediately. Security breaches and partisan movements of its only made this place too dangerous. The officer demanded the members of the conference get out, got out of their seats, and headed for the door. Hurry the heck up! Siegfried, you fat dude, before I leave you here for some s s Slavic beast and blow your brains out, the Wehrmacht officer commanded, banging his fist on the wall, right apologies. Siegfried stood up before he got on his feet, a bullet flew in the air. <clears throat> the officer laid a pool of blood on of his blood on the floor, a bullet hole straight through the back of his head. A raggedly dressed partisan wearing the Russian tricolor in his arm entered the room, armed with a torque in his hand. The door clicked, locked by the hands of another partisan outside. Dmitri lifted his pistol in the air, and his own voice boomed with a smile across his face. Right as time we get down to business, Dmitri shouted, opening fire on the ceiling, before pointing it at a German bureaucrat and putting a hole between his eyes. 
the pseudomim. Washington whore, to make you slowly approach one of them, you subhuman monster, don't touch me. I will not die by the hand of a slot. A bang rang out. Who's next, eh? Dimitri asked. A smug look on his face. One of the Germans fiercely tugged on the locked door before his blood coated the handle. Slowly the room was painted red, and Dimitri was the only live person in the room. He looked out of the window, taking a cigarette out of his pocket, and opened the window to the room. He tried dusting some blood off his outfit. You got blood in my outfit, Kraut? Dimitri said to a corpse on the floor. Oh, that must have been. Dimitri looked out over the scenery. One day this will be all Russia once again. He puffed a cloud of smoke into the air. Soon enough, all of Russia will be liberated. We're gonna have some massive casualties. It's just god awful amount of casualties, I can tell. Um you. Wait. Oh you oh you're busy. Oh you guys. Uh Oh, this guy looks pretty good. There you go. Batrakov. Are we out of equipment? Oh, we need more anti-tank. Way more anti-tank, actually. Hmm. Right instead of that, tech helicopter. Piercing goes down by a little bit. We get way more breakthrough. Do we have enough attack helicopters for that? We do. Okay. Hmm. Recon. Medivac. Air assault companies would be nice. Reconnaissance goes way down. Anti-tank is not good enough. But breakthrough goes up by a crap ton more. And more defense. More organization, too. Okay, why not? As long as we got the equipment for it, that's what I really care about. Just missing a crap ton of support equipment now. Oh my god. Bad amount, just not enough. The Germans are gonna have way bigger air force than us, though. There you go. Do the best you can. Seventeen billion. Holy crap. War in the skies. There were no modern war. One must control the skies to control the skies. One must have fighters. Have fighters. Uh, one must have airfields, and so shall be. If we're to win the war against Germany, we must win the war in the sky. As such, a major public works project to rebuild old airfields and upgrade current ones is now underway. This old Soviet air force, despite its immense size, was destroyed by the Luftwaffe in the Second World War and later in the Rus West Russian War. But let's not repeat the same mistakes that they've made in three times in a row. Already brave men have answered Mother Russia's call and joined the Air Force to bring glory to our land and freedom to our people. We shall dominate the skies, we shall crush the Germans, we shall free our people, we shall reclaim the land, and we shall bring justice to our comrades who died before. War is more than just troops on the ground. We're only 4% of eligible core population. Hmm. We've learned from the mistakes that have been made in Operation Barbarossa. The Wehrmacht has not changed since the West Russian War. We know ex what to expect and more importantly, how to stop them in their tracks. We'll not be caught off guard by the Germans again. Which is nice, but we need manpower. Oh my god. Condemn the Reich. It's time for the Federation to speak directly to the Reich. The world must never forget the unforgivable crimes they've inflicted upon the Russian people and the people of Europe for 40 years. We'll, never, we'll forever condemn the Reich and we'll never forget the Nazis that have enslaved the Germans into submission and forced their brutal vision upon Europe. So your technology gives more manpower. Here, you can totally do that one. Mobilize the Federation. To defeat the Nazi menace, we must complete complete the Federation's transition to a war economy. Faktorsky industrial sectors will be nationalized and all production reorganized for the conflict against the Nazi superpower. The entire Russian economy will be transformed from simple tools and products to weapons of total warfare, which will be necessary to liberate the Muscovite people from the chains of oppression in his footsteps. Andre walked in front of a long row of gleaming T-72s, inspecting each tank with care. When well, they were in good condition, more than ready for the fuel. Whoever designed these were a genius. He muttered with a smile, he then heard shuffling footsteps and turned his back to see a much older man in the uniform. Other Soviet armed forces looking upon the tanks with curiosity in his eyes and a cane in his hand. Andre watched him for a moment before setting his clipboard aside and approached the old man. 
Excuse me, sir. I don't believe I've seen you before. Do you have clearance to be here? The young officers asked. The old man turned on the rain and smirked. Oh, can a veteran look upon the tools while my young comrades will use to liberate the West? From his chest, a distinct gold bar, the hero of the Soviet Union shone with pride. Andre sputtered. My apologies, I didn't know. The veteran tapped on one of the tanks with his cane and grinned. If we'd had these during the Great Patri Patriotic War, we would have made it to Berlin in a week. Andre chuckled. We'll be preparing for the fight ahead. We'll be back in Moscow in no time. I can promise you that. The veteran smiled and put his hand on Andre's shoulder. I doubt it. I don't doubt it, young man. I do not doubt it. All right, good. More output is always good. Um, where are the other things to get? Uh, what well, we need to this stuff. Good. It's almost seventeen billion. Hey, uh, don't worry about inflation. Inflation doesn't exist. Yeah, it's just it's made up. So how bad is everything else? Ooh, do we get, even finish this too? No, we do not. No, that's not good. Condemn the Reich. Ah, a letter to the Reich, to the deranged leadership of the great uh, German Reich. Your great country, one built on the spilt blood of so many innocents and the enslavement of millions, is a disgrace to human civilization. The country that your people are conditioned to adore and love is a sorry excuse for a civilized state. And yet you dismiss such accusations, pinning the various failures of your nation on the subhumans you have pledged to and failed to exterminate. Your state, the supposed light of beacon for a non existent master race, is merely a dirty chessboard. Another battlefield for the slave masters, butchers, and puppeteers to consolidate power while the average German toils every day. How can a country that was created to provide a utopia for its master race not even fulfill such a basic goal. Why should it continue to exist, the citizens of Russia? I've not forgotten the many injustices our people have had to endure for the last three decades, our country. Was once a melting pot of cultures and people from Europe to Asia, those brutally crushed by our hordes offer a prospective dream of a living space that was never fully realized soon. We should face the long-awaited consequences for the abomination you have created. Uh, the tortured of Eastern Europe cry for justice, and justice will come without warmth, the president of the Russian Federation, Vasily Shukshin, calm before the storm of those created of our own. When the Germans invaded the Soviet Union in 41, they overwhelmed the unprepared Red Army with their massive slaughter of tanks, planes, and mechanized divisions, using the Blitzkrieg to overwhelm B Belarus and Ukraine and seize our sacred Moscow. They caught us off guard, but not this time. This time it would be the all Russian army that overruns the Wehrmacht with such speed and ferocity that will have the Wehrmacht fleeing west in panic and fear that the Russian army had once, it had once known. <clears throat> nice. The Federation marches to war. I'm just so worried about manpower. Throughout Siberia, across the Ural Mountains, from the bank of the Blue Volga to the other, the Federation is awaking, like a giant woken from a thousand years of slumber, and stirs fitfully and rises to its enormous feet with the strength of a mountain. And Gorky in Chelyabinsk, Samara in Yekaterinburg, the great forges are heated by the ignition of Russian hopes and dreams, the people of those cities work day and night, turning out hundreds if not thousands of tanks ready to charge into Saxony. And Irkutsk and Omsk, young men kiss their sweethearts or the good wives goodbye, they give themselves Give of them themselves to fulfill a duty to their nation and their loved ones to build a world where families can be free. And to your men in Novosibirsk, veterans of air warfare, and greenbacks alike take to the skies, practicing flying uh, practice authorities or the snowy plains of Siberia from, uh, from above, it seems all so small. And Kamchatka and Arkhangelsk, veterans of the Red Navy set aside their politics to battle for the liberation of millions. Their only wish is that they could have won under Bukharin. They weep for those souls lost in the Second World War, every man, woman, and child burned by the red hot rod of slavery since those dark days began, and for Nudings and Kazan, men out of Russia, prepare to take up arms. Their sacrifice will be remembered as the greatest of all in the decades to come, in Ukraine and the Caucasus Mountains. Old men dig up rifles long buried, their unit's brothers have been just decimated for four four times over. The old don't the old men don't expect to live to the end of the Second West Russian War, but the roar of their defiance will shake Atlas's very arms. And the presidential palace. President Shukshin waits patiently. As eyes to the west, soon the Federation will be going to war once more, and the people will be ready for the struggle ahead. We should not enter Aldegator's halls with words of fear upon our lips. Actually, before we even do anything about Sokol, we have no idea how many divisions he has. No idea how his, his manpower and whatnot like that, too. Oh, boy. We have only two of these guys here. Excuse me, can I guess can't do, can't do Germania. Uh, for the liberation of all Russians, after years of suffering and humiliation in the hands of the Nazi Reich, the Federation is ready to step westward and liberate the occupied lands under the domination of the fascist state. It's time to do what we've promised to our people for the liberation of all Russians. Invades I expect. Well, we're still training these guys, because they're still pretty goddamn green. Um, the plan. When the Wehrmacht stormed France and later Russia, they changed warfare forever the revolutionary doctrine, the name of which is enough to still fear and flashbacks to even the most hardened of the veterans of Blitzkrieg. The goal is quite simple, advance into enemy territory as fast as possible. Tanks into the armored vehicles stormed the border in the beginning hours of the war, followed by air raids and the infrastructure and military targets, before mobilized infantry rushing to clean up the mess. Joe Novikov explained, his eyes still on the war map. What about our industries? Can they keep up with the demands? Shukshin asked, looking over to Karchenko. Our industrial capacity has grown tremendously in recent years. I've been in contact with the heads of Phoenix and Sabir that told me their industries are up to the task, Michal explained. Vasily glanced over to Pokrushkin, the aviator reserved expression on his face. Thinking deeply to himself, did you have anything to add, Alexander? Uh, Shukshin asked, turning to his friend. We're really doing this, he muttered, walking over to the war map. I feel for the future, Vasily. I'm not sure what the outcome of this all will be, but I've learned to put my faith in you, and of course, I don't doubt the abilities of General Novikov and Korchenko. I like our odds, Vasily. I think we've got a chance this time around. Alexander explained, turning his back to the three men in the room. The rider smiled, placing a hand on the aviator's shoulder. Victory will be ours, old friend, and we'll go and invade soon. 
I just want to make sure that we have enough uh, combat experience before we do such a thing. And here we're gonna go. Ooh, we have another focus tree. Oh boy, Op Operation Bagration. The time has finally come from the humble beginnings of the breakaway of the Central Soviet Republic of the reunification of Russia has led all the way to this moment. We're now at war with Germany. The road ahead will be costly, many lives will be lost, but in the end we'll achieve what President Shukshin has sought from the moment he took office. The liberation of all Russians from tyranny. This may very well be Russia's last war. We risk everything we hold dear to our hearts in the coming conflict. Let us battle our old foe and remember and one last time and give them a fight they'll remember. Um, so I think I might actually, unfortunately, save the rest of this for, uh, the next episode, so. We will see, I guess, just in the next episode how we're gonna do, so. River Crossing Speed Penalty. Overall, not bad. Um, Ford Russia. So, we will see uh, next time how well we do, because this has almost gone on for an hour. And you'll just say, whatever. Enact war taxes, that's probably not gonna help us out very much, even though income tax is looking very nice. Uh, business and income tax goes up by 15%. We're spending a crap ton of the military, so. It is what it is. But I apologize for not going to war with this episode. Um, yeah, we'll do it next episode. There you go. We're just going to be moving in. But if you enjoyed this video up to this point, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as millions of people are going to end up dying. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.